Hey there Wargamers, Justin from Amp Services with this week's Tactical Tuesday video. In this session, we're going to be talking about the psychological impacts that certain units and certain styles of gameplay may have on your opponent. Now this is not limited to just spamming things like Wraith Knights and giant things like that, but rather other units in the game and how it might impact your opponent. One of the most iconic units in the Warhammer 40k universe has got to be the Space Marine Vindicator. More specifically, the Linebreaker Squadron. Now, in previous editions, the Vindicators weren't actually able to squadron, so you actually would run three of these as separate units. But in the current rules, you can take them as a squadron, and they can, in essence, combine their shots into one large one, make a really huge apocalyptic blast that ignores cover. Now, what I like about this unit is that, for whatever reason, every time I field them, they catch a lot of aggro from my opponents, even if there's not a lot of things that the Vindicators can actually damage. It's that fear factor. It's that this is a strength 10 AP 2 large blast, this unit's got to go type mentality. So when I run these and I run three and I drive them down the field or get a good vantage point to fire, I know full well that my opponent's probably going to react in such a way that they're going to attempt to take them out. This is where the psychological aspect comes in. While they're focusing on taking out my Vindicators or trying to deal with them, even if the Vindicators may not be a huge threat to them, that opens up avenues for the rest of my army to actually respond and try and take the advantage. In this particular example, my opponent deep struck one of his dread knights right in front of my squadron of tanks. He was really worried about taking them out and made a tactical error. He forgot that he could not actually assault after deep striking. His tactics otherwise were sound. If this guy got in and broke my ranks and my tanks, he was going to demolish them. The flip side, however, is that he put his unit in a bad position. He kind of got tunnel vision saw a target that he thought he was going to be able to take out, wanted to take out, or needed to take out, and paid the price for that. And that's kind of the idea with fielding the Linebreaker Squadron or any unit of similar strength or uh, interest. You kind of get your opponent to, to tunnel vision on that unit and they get stuck. They, they stop thinking about the rest of the game. To make matters worse, in this particular example, my Linebreaker Squadron, as well as my Contemptors and my two other predator tanks didn't have any targets to begin with so had he not deep struck one of his dread knights right in front of me a huge portion of my army didn't have targets to fire at in the first place so he actually jumped in hoping to take out some vehicles and then fed me a kill in essence this is almost a form of a catch-22 however though because by deep striking that dread knight in front of me I was also forced to attack it the fact that he didn't necessarily need to deep strike there was really the issue. Deep striking there and forcing me to attack it if that was going to pull my attention off of his other units would have been sound. But in this particular example he fed me a unit to fire at when I otherwise wouldn't have been able to fire. Even if you understand that some units are going to draw a player's attention and possibly alter their gameplay, maybe even for the worse, it's easy for you to fall victim to this as well. Fully understanding what's going on. In this particular game I actually deep struck next to one of my opponent's Dread Knights thinking my unit of Stern Guard veterans could take him out. I'm going to wound him on twos um, and he's going to have to roll a handful of dice. This was a tactical mistake. I saw a unit that I was scared of, I wanted to take it out, I threw a bunch of points at it and I wasn't thinking. Had I actually sent these units towards something else, towards another objective, towards another unit, I probably could have taken first blood and put myself ahead. Instead, I went after a large unit because I was scared of it and I was worried about it, and I failed to get first blood and failed to take the advantage. I gave the advantage to my opponent. Going after a large unit like this that draws attention is not always bad. If the unit that's going after them is capable of taking it out, or if you have other units to follow up to finish it off. Again, in this particular case, I invested a lot of points towards wounding this Dread Knight, didn't have the backup to finish him off, and put myself in a really bad position. This all could have been avoided if I just thought logically. Altering your opponent's gameplay is not specifically limited to fielding a very effective or scary unit. Simply just putting units up in your opponent's face can also make them make decisions that may be poor for them. In this particular example, my opponent had to react to a deep striking farsight with a whole bunch of stealth suits. My tactic was that I will put this unit up in front of them, I'll deep strike in with two Meltas and I'll try and take out some tanks. In this particular game, my fusion blasters failed to take out the tanks and I suffered because of this. That being said, however, 
I forced my opponent to spend most of his units for that full turn, taking out Farsight and his makeshift body guardian. This style of Phosphere gameplay basically can be done with a variety of armies. If you select a really standout deep strike unit that you're literally going to use for a specific job and or disruption. Again in this particular case I deep struck in hoping to take out some tanks and I knew full well that my opponent was going to have to deal with that unit. Because he had to deal with that unit I was pulling the pressure off the rest of my army and the rest of my army could move, adapt and try and overcome. Prior to Farsight hitting the table in this particular game my opponent was investing a lot of resources trying to hit my Ghost Kill and my Riptide. I found in my experience that in previous games, the Riptide and the Ghost Kill draw a lot of attention. Units like this, units like Dread Knights, they help pull attention off the rest of your army. So you want to move your Rhinos up forward, you want to move your Devilfish, your dedicated transports. It helps you position the rest of your army. If your opponent ignores them and goes after those other units, it's going to give your bigger units more time to shine. So it's, it's really a balancing game. What are you going to make your opponent do? How are you going to get inside their head? Do you know that they're going to go after your big units? Or how are you going to respond if they do? If they ignore those big units, how are you going to capitalize with those larger units to make them or punish them for doing so? The sky really is the limit in terms of using units to try and have an impact on your opponent's gameplay. In this particular photo, my opponent was fielding several centurions with Tigurius. This is a really good Death Star unit. It also, in addition to being tanky, can dish out some damage. So for me, as his opponent, it's really hard to determine what I want to go after. Do I want to go after his tanks? Do I want to go after his infantry? Do I want to go after his Death Star unit? Units like that really impact your opponent and make them make choices. And sometimes those choices can really be detrimental to your gameplay. They could, they could cost you the game. So you have to determine what's worth going after. The big Death Star kind of unit, the tanky unit, the scary unit, or you're going to go after units you know you can take out and try and gain the momentum of the game. It's all a balancing act. It's all always a back and forth. Big giant destructive units like the Riptide, like the Vindicator, like Night Titans, like Wraith Knights, things like that. Those are straightforward. Those already draw the attention of your opponent and they can make them make decisions. They can possibly make them make mistakes. But aside from those, I really do favor Death Star kind of units, mobile units, units that get up in your opponent's face. I find that these are the most fun to play, and they definitely make your opponent think, and that may or may not help you in the game, or leaning towards hopefully helping you. And in this particular photo, this is one of my favorite units to fill for the Tau, and it's my Crisis Suit Commander with a unit of hazard suits as a makeshift bodyguard. This unit is not particularly deadly, it's really good at shooting at other infantry and light vehicles, but it's the fact that it's highly mobile, very tanky with its stimulant injectors, and it can get up in my opponent's face and bounce away. This generally forces my opponent to focus on them or outright ignore them while they're kind of plinking away. Things like this make your opponent make decisions, makes them make choices. Hopefully, those choices benefit you, and that's the whole thing to remember when you're trying to look at the, app, or the psychological effects that you may have on your opponent's gameplay. Remember guys, when you're trying to get your opponent to react to what you're doing, always reevaluate your units and your actions every turn. You're not necessarily going to know what they're going to do, and because you don't know, you have to always be adaptable. Remain dynamic. Never become a complacent player. Always look at the units, try and figure out your next move. React to how your opponent's reacting to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please sound off below and let me know. Additionally, please consider subscribing and helping to support the channel. Finally, if you haven't already, please also check us out on Facebook. You'll be able to stay up to date with all of our current commissions and promotions. Finally, all the Tau models you saw in this video, and the majority of the Ultramarines you saw, particularly the tanks and the Sterngar veterans, those were all my models and I painted those. That's how I make a living, I'm a commission artist. So if you'd like to have me paint something for you, please click Quote Request Now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, happy wargaming.